Hello, everyone, and welcome to our A to J Author new user webinar. This is Jessica Frank, A to J Author's project manager. With me today from our Cali staff, I have our executive director, John Mayer, and our A to J Thanks, John. And our A to J Author backend developer, Tobias Enterejo, will be joining us shortly as well. Today, we're going to talk about new and upcoming features in A to J Author and a quick refresher on how you can host your A to J guided interviews and your A to J DAT that's our document assembly tool templates on Kali's a to j.org for testing purposes or for use with your end user. On our agenda today, we're going to cover the new advanced navigation panel, the reduced user interface, the merge tool, a to j dat accessibility preview button, tabbed question design editor, and then we'll do a refresher on hosting on a to j.org, both your a to j guided interviews and your a to j dat templates. And then we'll leave room at the end for Q&A and community discussion. So the first new feature to show you is the advanced navigation panel. We're working with our partners at Michigan Advocacy Program on a TIG to add a couple enhancements to A to J Author over the last year and this year. This is the first one we've released, which came out last December. We've had requests for years to allow end users to jump back into their interviews for the point in which they exited the interview and to also allow them to better see the interview, how it's structured, to navigate around the interview easier. The advanced navigation panel that you're seeing here, which is now in all A to J guided interviews, does that for the end users. Every interview now comes equipped with this advanced navigation panel without requiring the authors to do or add anything else. The advanced end user navigation panel allows end users to more easily navigate their way through an A to J guided interview, allowing them to preview upcoming questions and to jump around to previously visited pages. This feature also allows end users who are reloading their saved answer files to begin again at the last page in which they left the interview, rather than having to start over at the beginning of the interview again when they resume. That's often a point of confusion for end users when they reload answer files and they're taken back to the beginning of the interview. All of their answers are in the interview itself and in the questions in which they filled those answers in, but end users don't know that and can be confused. And so they think they're starting over again fresh. Um, and even if they had progressed through and seen their, their um, uh, the variables filled in, they don't know that at the introductory screen. So this is hope hopefully will reduce user confusion because, because they jump back in exactly where they left off. And again, they can go back to any of the pages they previously visited through the My Progress bar or through the navigation panel that we've added, but they can also move forward then in the interview without any confusion about where they are. When this panel is opened, the end user is shown their progress within the interview. The current page they're on is indicated by the circle with a dot in it and text that is emboldened, as you can see down the left of the screen here. They're also shown pages that they are able to preview. So these are in italics and a slightly lighter text color. By default, this panel is hidden to the end users, but it can be opened via the show navigation panel and the bottom of the interview. Authors also have the option to have this panel open by default, and they can select this option for their interview in the About Tabs layout section, which I'll show you in a little bit. Pages are, that are able to be previewed to the end user are limited to those up until the next breaking point. So we um, envisioned breaking points as points in the interview in which the, off, the end user has to make some sort of decision or there's logic. So breaking points in an interview are any questions that contain required, that are marked as required fields, or any pages that have logic either before or after. So those are breaking points in which the end user is not going to be able to see further on in the path because we see those as forks in the road. So anywhere there's a fork in the road, we pause the, um, the end user's preview at that point, and once they make a decision, then additional pages are shown after that. Now some A to J guided interviews are gonna allow end users to see many questions in advance. There's some interviews that I've seen that have you know, dozens of questions that don't have any required fields or any of these logic breaking points. Other interviews are going to have very few questions available to preview. Sort of depends on, on your authoring style and, um, and how you've created your interview, what the end user is going to be able to see. But just know when you're authoring that to keep these breaking points in mind. Now, the advanced end user navigation panel does allow end users to skip ahead to pages that are in that preview range. However, the end user is restricted from entering any data into those preview pages. The fields are locked. 
and a warning icon as seen here, the little triangle with the exclamation point in it, is displayed in the navigation panel to indicate that questions have been skipped. Here is the About Tabs layout section with a checkbox for authors to select if they want the navigation panel open by default. Remember, it's closed. The end user has to affirmatively select Show Navigation Panel. Um, if you as authors want that panel open all of the time, you can check this box in the About section of your interview under Layout, and that interview will always open with the navigation panel. Authors can see what the navigation panel looks like to end users in preview mode. Um, we've created a toggle in the debug panel that allows authors to toggle between the debug panel and the advanced navigation panel. So in the right-hand screenshot here, I'm showing the debug panel. In the upper right-hand corner, there is the two arrows that are pointing in opposite directions. That's our toggle indicator. If you click that, it's going to flip back and forth between the debug panel um, and the script here um, and the advanced navigation panel. The Advanced Navigation Panel does come by default in all guided interviews. You don't have to do anything to take advantage of this new feature. The only author change that is required is if you as authors want that Navigation Panel open all the time. Then you would need to go into the Layout section, check that box, and republish your interview to wherever you host it. The only other caveat is that users who created answer files in older versions of the A to J viewer, so anything before the December uh, 2021 version of the A to J viewer, are, um, are not going to have a history to display initially upon reload. The mechanism for tracking the user's visited pages and storing that in the answer file was added when we released the navigation panel code. So it's all tied together. The, uh, they can still um, see pages in the future, like all of the future features um, that end users get to see when they open the, um, the navigation panel. That's all available to all end users, but reloaded answer files won't have that history um, because we don't have the tracking variable in those old answer files. Um, you as authors can check out this new feature immediately in your interviews in your authoring accounts on a to jauthor.org in preview mode using the toggle that I mentioned and in all interviews that you have hosted on a to j.org. Um, it's not currently the version of the A to J viewer that was on LHI, but we expect it to be available there soon. With the new navigation panel comes our second new feature, which is the... Jessica? Yeah, go ahead. Can I, can I comment about that? Can you go back one screen? Sure. Yeah, th this, is an, this is a really interesting feature, and, and I think it has... Uh, um, I, I mean, it, it seems like it's an obvious thing. Let the user, um, you know... Uh, navigate to where they've already been start where they were they left off sort of thing but but the, but it, the, but there's something sort of deeper going on here and and this isn't the I, I don't think this is the end of our of our thinking about about how to display navigation to the end user um, th this is also one of those situations where if you're doing a paper form you can see the whole form right you can you can always like flip back and forth uh, you know you get you get sort of a a, a big picture overview of, of what you're doing. And by automating the forms, we're changing the order of the questions, we're, we're, we're actually being, we're, we're, we're helping the user by, but, but, but at the same time, we're, we're, we're changing the process and imposing a sort of a, a necessary uh, guidance uh, aspect to it. As a result, you gotta be careful about, you know, giving them the overview because because we're only showing them in the guided interview what they've what they've completed so far, and and one of their decisions, you know, something that they enter might change something later on, and so you don't want to uh, give people um, what's the word misinformation or or misguidance in doing that. Now, there is no like perfect way to do this, first of all, and second, um, for the most part, filling out a form and especially the simpler forms. This isn't going to be a big deal, you know. Just the fact that you could restart is is good enough. This really bring rears its head when when you're talking about longer term or longer processes in law, where there's decisions where early decisions have big ramifications in what you can do later. You know, I'm not sure it comes into the 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 document automation aspect of it, but but it but it might later. And and so you know, so so building interface things like this, we, we, we try to think carefully about, about what those longer term ramifications are. That's all I wanted to say. 
Thanks. I'm going to uh, We see we have a question here. Um, so the question was, uh, user button, user decisions via buttons aren't saved in the answer file, right? So that part of the history is lost. Um, actually, the button they click is saved in the new navigation panel. Um, and we have a fix coming in so, so that the user's button that they selected will be highlighted for them automatically. So that when they um, go back to that page, they'll be reminded of what button they clicked initially. So that is saved in this new uh, user history that's being tracked. So part another new feature that we have that goes hand in hand with the advanced navigation panel is the request that we've had from authors to um, have a reduced interface for the A to J guided interview. So one that removes the avatars, the courthouse, and the path imagery. So this, what we've included, we're calling the reduced user interface, is similar to the mobile view, but it is the desktop size. So this is the same thing that an end user would see if they were on a small tablet or a phone, but it is writ large. So authors now can choose to select this user interface if you do not want to have avatars um, and the courthouse and the, the path sort of imagery, you can have this um, pared down version on your, on, your, on your interview, regardless of the user's computer screen. So this reduced interface is available by selecting use reduced interface option under the about tab. So it's right above this navigation panel open by default. If you check that box, um, whenever the interview is run in the A to J viewer, you will, the end user will see this interface. Okay, so what I've shown you now, before with these new features are currently on our production site. So the advanced navigation panel and the reduced user interface are currently in production. You can see them um, in on a to j.org, on a to j author.org, um, whoever is hosting your site, your, um, your interviews with the latest version of the a to j viewer, all of that is present. What you're going to see next, what I'm going to show you next, is what we have under construction still. So if you see something you like, let us know. If you see something you don't like, let us know also. There's still time to change and improve before we release this to production. So um, any and all feedback is welcome. And after I show this next merge tool, I'll check the comments and the chat again because I see there's one coming up. So this is our new merge tool. It was another highly requested feature from authors. This tool is going to allow authors to create new interviews or add to existing interviews by merging or copying parts of other interviews. So for example, if you're creating a new eviction defense interview in state A and you love the way state B does their means calculator, you can copy that logic, the series of questions that gathers the information, the variables that they're using. You can grab that all wholesale and pull it into your new interview. But you only, you're only pulling in that small component, that part. You're not taking the entire interview. You're just cutting out one part that you like and putting it into your new interview. Then say you like how state C has scripted their possible defenses questions. You can grab just those questions, merge them into the interview, your original interview with state B's logic. Now you've added state C's possible defenses questions to build out this new eviction defense interview for yourself. You can grab it and merge into your interview. And now um, let's say your organization has a set of introductory screens that explain to the end user who made the interview, how it's used, um, how you're not their lawyer, all of those like qualification questions that you have in your interview. You can also pull those in to your new interview. So your whole catalog can have the same introductory screens or the same closing screens, whatever you want, um, and no more copying and pasting, which we all know is fraught with danger. The new merge tool is going to do that all for you. So on the interviews tab, when this, this is currently on our staging site, it's not in production. So when it is in production, you will see under um, the section that says create a new interview at the very top, we have blank interview and also merged interviews, which allow you to pick parts from existing interviews. So you click the merged interview and it takes you into um, this screen where you can select the interview in which you want to start with. So what is your initial interview that you're going to pull pieces into? So you select that. And then once you pick that interview, you're given a list then on the right hand side, which says step two over here, pull the now select what interview you want to pull from. So you which interview are you going to take parts from to build out this new merged interview? When you select the interview that you want to use, the merge tool will open up that second interview in a split screen with the original interview. 
and then you're going to be able to select the components that you want to copy over. So you can take variables, either all of them or select which ones you want to take. Here in this GIF, I'm taking age and asset and pulling those into my new interview. You can take steps wholesale, you can take individual questions, and you can take pop-ups. So this allows you to pick and choose through the interview what you're taking. Um, you can take a whole step, you can take all the steps, you can take just one page. Um, you can either even drill down further and uh, just take logic from a, an individual page. Um, once you've selected everything and you click that merge button, it pulls it into your original interview. And now that first interview has the two um, variables, age and asset that I pulled in. It has the two pop-ups I selected and the one page that I added. So this GIF is just, um, it's circling through and it's looping. But as you watch it, you can see that it's pulling in just the individual components from the second interview that I wanted in my, my first interview. We've also built in a couple of safety measures to ensure that the original interview isn't completely overwritten unintentionally. So we have merge selected and we also have safe merge selected. So merge is gonna overwrite, overwrite conflicts with the original with a new component. So if you have a page called one dash assets in your original interview and you select a one dash assets from the merge interview, that second one dash assets is gonna overwrite the original. If, it, if the original had logic um, and the second one didn't, it's gonna delete that logic. Um, with safe merge, that is going to append a, uh, a ZZZ prefix to the front of the page name or the variable name or the step name, whatever has the conflict, so that it is safely merged into the original interview and there are no questions overwritten. You're gonna have to then, if there are conflicts, go through and clean up your original interview, but this ensures that um, nothing in your original one is lost. So there's merge and there's safe merge that you'll have to get used to and figure out which one you prefer. Until you're comfortable with merging, we'd recommend that you make a copy of your original interview and then merge the new components into it just to be safe. We are hoping that this new merge tool is gonna make replication easier both internally in your organization and amongst different authoring organizations. It'll make sharing things that you like smoother and also it'll help you make your entire interview catalog consistent. Well, that's really important to have um, all of your interviews have the same sort of face to the end user because end users may end up using multiple of your interviews um, and you want them all to look the same. So you've put the work into drafting introductory screens, um, coming up with naming conventions, building out your variables in a way in which works. And so you can share that easily now amongst your entire catalog of interviews. Um, and to start off with, the merge tool is going to give you access to all of the interviews you've created to merge from. So your um, the secondary source that you're pulling from, that second interview, that's going to be only ones that you have created. We're also planning to include a curated list of interviews that are made by authors in this community that have solid components that are shareable. So it's not going to be everybody's whole list of all interviews that they have. But we're going to start with a curated list of ones that we that are in production, that are out in the world, have been tested, we think are good examples of how inter inter interviews should be run, things you should copy from, and hopefully build out the ability to let authors contribute to that catalog in the future. John, did you have a comment? Oh, I sure do. <laughs> so this this is a this is an awesome tool, but man, it's th th this is this is this is full of compromises. And what I mean by that is is we didn't want to recreate GitHub from scratch. And 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 if 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 the if the programmers amongst you are thinking, well, why don't you just do this whole thing in GitHub? The answer is GitHub's almost like it's just such a powerful tool, and it's hard to learn and become um proficient and comfortable with it unless you use it like almost every day or or use it a lot and and the majority of our authors are not daily users even of a to j author much less programmers and so we wanted a tool that said look we, look we just, just want something that helps you merge some things without getting into too much trouble you know but but we're not going to like try to like i said recreate github from scratch um but it has to have some power to it you know and so and so hopefully this is a this is the right balance of capability and um, and and uh, suitable suitable suitability to task without being you know underpowered you know such that you know you, you're not doing like a full um, a full regex 
um, version control system sort of thing going on here. You know, it's just the things you need to do to, to accomplish a very specific goal, which is, I know there's a great component or a great set of things that I've already done. You know, I don't want to sit there for a half hour doing, you know, cut and paste or, you know, have two screens open. Um, here's a quick way to like suck some things in from other interviews. And, and, and then if this catches on or, or you know, if, if, if people get, get used to something at this level, um, you know, we can imagine sort of a larger collection of materials like Jessica mentioned that such, such that you're Lego blocking future interviews, you know, I need, you know, I need a means testing module. I need a, you know, uh, an address module. I need a how many children module, you know, and then I need, you know, and, and then you're done. Um, or then you're, or you're 80% done or something like that. So that, that's, that's what we're like looking for is, is that, uh, the ability to sort of, uh, build things a little bit faster and to, and to lean on, stand on the shoulders of other people's work or of even your own previous work. Thanks. Um, we had a question that came in about the advanced navigation panel. So uh, one of the questions was, is there an option as a developer to prevent users from being able to use the navigation panel? There's currently not. So all interviews that run in uh, any version of the viewer after December 2021 will have the option to show the navigation panel. That is an interesting feature, though. Um, and I would be... Why would you want to? That, that was going to be my question, yeah. So we have the yeah. option to toggle to have it on always. Um, so Steve, if you want to explain, you can put it in the chat. We can circle back to it um, as to why you'd want it off all the time, but uh, potentially, but not right now. Um, okay. So the um, the next new feature to talk about is the A to J DAT, our document assembly tool preview. So this is part of the work that we're doing to increase the accessibility of our A to J guided interviews for end users. We worked really hard last year to complete a TIG um, where we focused on the WCAG, Web uh, Content Accessibility Guidelines, getting our A to J viewer up to a compliance level of AAA, which is the highest level that they have. Um, most parts of our A to J viewer that we as A to J author control are up to that AAA standard. There are um, some things that are author controlled, including consistent naming of your buttons, where you, how you use fields and that kind of stuff that are all um, under our accessibility guidelines on, on the authoring guide. If you're curious how your interview falls in terms of accessibility and uh, best practices, we have that on our website to check out. But everything we can control in the viewer, we've done to bring it up. So now this year, we've moved on to that same level of accessibility for the DAT templates. Um, this year, we're working on a TIG with Atlanta Legal Aid Services to make A to J templates as accessible as possible. So one of the problems with any templates that come out uh, especially in PDF format is that PDFs are problematic for screen readers. So what we've done is any time that there is an A to J text template, we have included an HTML preview page that is screen reader readable. And this work um, includes the button you're seeing here. Um, the one that says you have documents that can be previewed and the open document preview. When the end user clicks that, if there are text templates that can be shown in this um, HTML uh, version, then um, they pop up and the end user screen reader can go through it and it's been optimized to be um, the best for screen readers. The end user then sees it before the P it, before it becomes a PDF. They can, when they're done reading through it, they can close it and then actually click get my document, which at which point their PDF will be generated for them. Uh, this only works on A to J text templates. It's not at all related to hot docs templates, regardless of how your hot docs template is made. This is only for A to J DAT templates and it's only for A to J text templates. We also have templates that start as PDFs called PDF templates. Um, so part of our accessibility work with Atlanta is to create a best practices guide on how to optimize PDFs when using PDF templates, as opposed to when we start with a PDF template, as opposed to starting with a blank document like you do with text templates, there are some best practices guides this best practices guide relies on a lot of the features in Adobe Pro to review and optimize the underlying PDF to mark up that, that PDF as best as possible before the variables are overlaid. 
So that best practices guide for PDF templates is going to be released this spring. This document preview for text templates will also be released this spring. Finally, the, ne the, thing, the next thing that we're um, doing in 2022 is optimizing the authoring experience in addition to the end user experiences that I've already talked about. So we understand that authors approach the authoring process differently. So we're trying to create ways that um, to allow authors to be comfortable when they're authoring and to be as intuitive for all authoring po uh, types as possible. So one example of this is the map enhancements that we released about a year ago that allow authors to quickly draw out their interviews in a flowchart fashion. So for those that are more visual learners, we're hoping that'll help you script out questions and interviews faster. This is another new one. So this new tabbed question design is in that vein. It'll allow authors to view the different sections of the question design editor. That's the place where the bulk of your authoring happens in a new tabbed format. So you'll be able to toggle to the original with the, you'll have the original scroll down layout that we have now, but then you'll be able to toggle to this tab view depending on your authoring preference. This is an example of the new tab design. So you'll be able to click through different page info, question info, learn more, fields, buttons, and advanced logic. If you prefer to see each chunk in, um, in a singular view, instead of having to focus on the entire question design process at once, if you prefer the original, that, that's what will exist. Um, right now, but that tab view is up for discussion as well. Depending on your authoring preference, you may like to see um, everything in smaller chunks. So do I have any questions on the new features? Before we move on, I'm going to check the question panel. Okay, so um, going back I got, to... A, I got a comment on, on the, uh, on the uh, DAT preview. Okay. Just a quick one. Accessibility is, uh, is, is something near and dear to us. Um, and, and so tricky, right? Because it, it can mean so. It means different things for different types of uh, of accessibility. Um, uh, screen readers is is not is not the ultimate or only solution, but it's one of them. You know, and so uh, so so we're always looking as we do with development, to make sure that we can like improve that capability for um, for people who are in the in that situation. Um, that's all. That's all I wanted to say about that. Yeah, and our accessibility work on the viewer itself wasn't just to optimize for screen readers. We also did for those with color uh, contrast issues, with sizing of buttons, with the ability to tab through, which makes it easier for everybody to get through an interview, not just anyone using a screen reader. Um, we added in uh, fields for alternative text and um, to put transcripts in and a lot, of, a lot of additional work beyond just optimizing for screen readers with the viewer work. Um, and we have a, uh, a comment about the um, advanced navigation panel and why they'd want it off all the time and that it may need a detailed explanation on how to use it, especially in complicated interviews. So um, we'll, we'll take that under advisement. That makes sense um, as a reason to why you'd want it off all the time. It, I mean, contrary, if you're looking at the devil's advocate on that side, a complicated interview may benefit from the advanced navigation panel in that um, the end user can see sort of where they've been, what questions need to come forward. So um, we'd love feedback once you guys are seeing it live um, in the wild and people are running through your interviews, what's working and what's not. You can always email me. Um, my email will be at the end of the slides, but it's jessica at cali.org. Um, the, the next thing that's not new, um, but that we wanted to remind you about is that Cali offers free hosting for A to J guided interviews and A to J texts or A to J templates in general for that are intended for use for, by pro se litigants on our website A to J.org. So publishing your interview to A to J.org creates a URL that can be shared with end users. From that URL, end users can run the guided interview, create their documents, and save their answers for later use. Now this only applies to interviews that uh, do not have a tot docs template but we are happy to teach you how to author backend templates in the A to J DAT. If you are interested in converting your uh, Hot Docs templates to the A to J DAT tool, we have training materials on that. Our team here at Cali is available for help um, and we have developers that have worked on that as well. If you do want to check out publishing to A to J.org, it is available to all authors within their A to J guided interviews on A to J under the publish tab, which is shown here on the left. 
your credentials for authoring on a to j author.org allow you to publish directly to a to j.org with no additional uh, adjustments needed. We support English, we support Spanish, and Vietnamese A to J guided interviews. So the content can be in English, Spanish, or Vietnamese that you create, and all of our landing pages are in those three languages as well. So the landing pages and the user instructions are available on our site in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. We worked with Lone Star Legal Aid on that um, about two years ago to get those in. Our privacy policy and our terms of use, if you are interested in what we do for security and privacy and what we're tracking and um, all of our restrictions are available on the site, but I have them here on the screen as well. So a to j.org slash privacy and a to j.org slash TOS. Um, you can check those out as well. If you have questions about hosting on our site or security, um, our backend developer, Tobias, is, um, is always available to chat and happy to answer those questions. He manages uh, a to j.org. Now, um, if you all have any questions, the floor is open. We left time today for um, community discussion or question and answer. So if you have anything to add, just feel free to raise your hand and I will unmute you. Or um, you can put your questions in the chat or comment box. The floor is yours. While we're waiting for anyone to raise their hands or put in a comment, John, if you have anything to add, um, feel free. I have nothing to add. I even hesitate to mention it. Um, uh, LHI says they'll, they'll have the, their, their system up uh, tomorrow afternoon. I look forward to a resumption of services um, and uh, hearing about you know what, 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 caused, uh, what caused this to happen so that we can all learn from, from, from uh, their, their problems. Um, I think we're I think we're better if we share information about these things so that we can protect ourselves if it's if it was uh, uh, some, something that, that that we can do to our systems to prevent uh, um, extended downtimes from happening. We do have a question in the panel about um, it, uh, can they sign up for previews or are they internal previews? So currently, um, the 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 navigation panel and the reduced user interface are in production. You can go to a to j author dot um, dot org right now and go into your interviews and um, you can check those out. The merge tool and the DAT accessibility and the tabbed uh, question design editor are in internal Q&A right now. So we are um, doing internal QA. We have an outside developer that works with us to do um, QA as well. And then um, we can pass that on to end user or to you. Um, but yeah, if you're, we're always looking for testers. We're always looking for um, people to give us feedback on it because there's only so much that our small team here at Cali can do. Um, so if you have feedback, if you are interested in testing with us or you're available, um, please reach out to me um, and we'll get you into sort of our um, internal testing queue as well. Um, and then a question about whether we have any information on LHI's crash and if we can provide that. Uh, as far as I know, we don't have any additional information that you all haven't heard from the LHI team. Yeah, I don't have anything. I've been, um, I've been, I've been the, uh, in the same boat as as, as you all are. So we're um, for those of you that do have solely A to J author interviews, if you need immediate uptime, um, you can put them on a to j.org. So that was always available as an option um, as a backup. They everything that you build and put on a to j.org is supported by LHI as well. So it's not like once you you move over to a to j.org, you, you can never come back um, to LHI. Uh, that LHI has the a to j dat on their system as well. All right, I'm not seeing any other hands or questions, so we'll leave it for a minute in case there are any. Um, but if you do have questions in the future, you can always uh, reach out to John, to Tobias, or to me. Um, if you have uh, anything you want to talk about, features that you want to see in A to J author, um, things, potential TIGs that you want to work on us with. So if there are interviews maybe that you want to convert to A to J DAT ones, or um, you want to talk about building new interviews using the merge tool, anything like that, we're open to partnering on TIGs as well. And those uh, letters of intent are due this month. So if you're interested in talking about that or drafting something with us, reach out to me. We've done um, dozens of TIGs over the years. So we're happy to show you letters of intent that we've done or work with you on those letters of intent as well. All right. Well, I'm not seeing anything new. 
Um, so thank you all for attending and we will see you next month.